The TOEFL Academic Discussion Task is the newest addition to the TOEFL IVT. In this video, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the exact format of this question. What does it look like? What do you have to do? How much time you have? All of these things we're going to be talking about. Then I'm going to show you a question. On top of that, I'll give you two ways to answer questions of the Academic Discussion Task. That is two answer templates. And then I'm going to solve this question using the right answer template for the scenario. Finally, we'll end this video by giving you some tips and strategies. And that's how you're going to be mastering the academic discussion task on the TOEFL. From my end, this aims to be the full and final video training that you will need for this question and you will not need to look anywhere else. So stay tuned. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that I can bring you more such videos. Now, let's talk about the format of this question. Now, this task would generally be in the form of an online classroom discussion. That means that you're in a class and online, the professor and some of your peers are discussing something. And this topic is usually something controversial, something that everyone would have different opinions about, but most likely one opinion is not better than the other. They're just different viewpoints to look at the question. So the professor will ask these students about their opinion on that particular controversial topic. Now, two students would have already mentioned their stand. That means generally one will be going for the motion, one against the motion. If the discussion is about apples and oranges, well, one will pick apple, one will pick oranges. You know, in most plots, you will see that all kinds of opinions exist. Now, it is your job to mention your stance, given reasons, why you have that sense. A typical answer here should be somewhere between 100 to 200 words and you're given a 10 minute time limit to actually draft this answer. Now remember, we've actually already done this. We've solved this entire question in the TOEFL video that we did, which had the full one hour course that I've done for you on the TOEFL and I've solved each and every question. In fact, I solved the whole mock test with you in that one hour video. So if you want to see me live solve that question, you can go on to that video. Now remember, we also know that this question is one of the latest question types on the TOEFL and hence it is not available yet in most of the practice tests available online. That's why we've made 12 such questions just for your practice and these are available directly on viamgrad.com. You go ahead to the link and I'll add this link in the description as well but you will be able to see there's a lot of questions here you can use to practice and you'll also have sample answers. Let's move on to the question. The question is something that you really need to look into for a moment because we're studying this for today's video. Over here, the professor is teaching a business class and in an online discussion forum, they ask these students about what are their viewpoints about the right balance between ethical marketing practices and achieving profit during market objectives. Now, we all know for a business, ethics and profits, generally, it's not easy. They don't go hand in hand in all cases, right? And hence, this is quite a controversial topic. And how do you balance these is the question that is being asked over here. The first answer you see over here is given by one of the students named Karen. And her whole argument is that balancing ethical marketing and profit-driven objectives is undoubtedly challenging. That means it's a difficult task, but it is achievable with the right approach. Successful businesses today understand that ethics and profitability aren't mutually exclusive. By prioritizing transparency, honesty, and consumer well-being, companies can build long-term trust and loyalty. Ethical marketing practices such as truthfully representing products and environmentally responsible initiatives not only align with societal values but also bolster a brand's reputation. Over time, this fosters customer loyalty and in turn sustainable profits. Striking this balance requires a commitment to value-driven marketing which can ultimately be a key driver of success in today's socially conscious marketplace. Whereas Ethan has a bit of a different response over here, what he says is that while the concept of balancing ethical marketing practices with market-driven objectives sounds appealing, it's often an uphill battle in the competitive business world. The relentless pursuit of profit can sometimes lead companies to compromise on ethics, resorting to deceptive advertising, greenwashing, or exploitative practices. Market pressures, shareholder expectations, and aggressive competition can create an environment where ethical considerations take a back seat. Unfortunately, these actions can harm a company's reputation in the long term, eroding trust and leading to legal and financial repercussions. Finding this equilibrium requires unwavering commitment, transparency, and ethical leadership, which can be elusive in 
an environment heavily focused on bottom line results. So what Ethan is trying to say here is that it's going to be a very difficult task and more or less it is something that generally does not happen very easily unless you have an ethical leader, right? So as you can understand, both these students have different opinions. One says that while it is difficult to balance it out, it is certainly possible and in the long run it'll help. The other one says that, well, I don't think that it always happens because these things take a backseat usually unless you have very good leaders. Now, at this point, you need to answer this question and you need to add your own comment. That's where you come in. Now, I'm gonna be giving you two answer templates over here. Let's go on to the templates and then we'll answer this question right in front of you. Remember that you will only use one template at a time. Both of these are meant to answer questions differently. That means only one will be usually relevant to answering the question. And you can decide which one, of course. Remember, no stance is wrong. Let's begin. The first template I have for you is where you are supporting the answer of one student and kind of not supporting the answer of the other student. All right, so you're not against it completely, but at the same time, you do feel that their answer is not the right one. And that's going to be your template number one. Template number two is where you disregard both the answers completely. And you say that, well, both of these students are not really saying the right thing. And I personally have a different opinion. All right, let's go on to template one and let's talk about that. So the template one starts by saying, addressing a challenging topic, I believe that, and then you respond directly to the question. What is the question about, right? Then you say, I strongly agree with student A's viewpoint on Again, and then you mention the point that that student has made, whatever you agree with, right? Then you move on and say, additionally, I would like to emphasize, and then you go on and you emphasize basically on the point that you may have in your own head. So this is an initial point that, that was not covered till here, right? That's your very own opinion that you mentioned. So first you say that the other student says this and I, I agree with them, right? And this is also one point that I would like to bring out additionally, right? And finally, point number four, what he says, while the other student rightly raised the relevant point that, and you mentioned whatever you like from the other person's response, right? And then you mention, but it is worth noting that, and then you challenge that point, all right? That's your template number one. And in the end, you just say, to illustrate this, and then you elaborate why you believe their exact opinion may not be right, all right? So that's what you do. You say that portion A's response is good, this is my opinion also, and this is what I want to add to the discussion. And person B's response, you know, I'm not really sure about that, and this is why. And I'll give you the reason. Usually, this is a very safe template to go with. It's easy, it's not difficult to understand, and you can even recycle some of the content of the answers of other students, which makes your life a lot easier. Now, let's talk about template two. There may be certain situations when you feel that none of these students are saying the right thing, right? My opinion is that this should happen. Well, this is the template for that one. Here, you begin by saying something like this. While I acknowledge the viewpoints expressed by both student A and student B, I hold the belief that, and then you ex explain what your belief is, what you think should be the right answer to this question. And then you go on and say, it is important to consider that, and then you expand on your point, right? You give more reasons, and then you say, thus, this is the point that I wanna make, all right? Finally, you go on and you say, certain people may argue that, and then you mention a challenging point. Could be from one of the other students, but what you think they may respond to your prompt, right? They may say that your answer is wrong because of this. You already challenge that. So, and then you say, however, it is worth noting that, and then you tell an exact reason why that a particular point is out of question. It's not something that we need to worry about. Now remember, these two templates, they're just templates. You can paraphrase these, or you can use these exactly. I can tell you for sure that ever since the new test got active, many of our clients have been using these templates and they have been able to secure quite good grades. So it's proven, we have used this, and we know for a fact that it won't cause issues even if you're using this exact template. Now, let me give you the answer to the question in the business class that we were talking about, the online discussion, right? And uh, here's the question again for your review if you'd like. You can pause it, you can read it if you want, but now let's move on to the answer that I prepared for you guys. Now, personally, I felt that the answer should be based on template one because both the opinions were already taken by the students. I don't think there's any other third opinion that I might have. So in the end, I had to agree with one of these students. Well, I agreed with Karen because that's personally what I feel is right, but you can also go with the other student and that's still completely okay. So here's my answer. 
I say addressing a challenging topic and again as you can see I'm following the template. I believe that balancing ethical marketing practices with profit driven objectives is an intricate task in the contemporary business landscape. I strongly agree with Karen's viewpoint on the importance of prioritizing ethical marketing practices. Karen's emphasis on transparency, honesty, and consumer well-being is fundamental in building trust and sustaining customer loyalty. And then I move on to the next part, and that is, additionally, I would like to emphasize that, and this is my real opinion, ethical marketing practices are not only a moral imperative, but also a strategic advantage. They can lead to positive brand image and goodwill, ultimately translating into long-term profitability. And then I say about the other student, while Ethan rightly raised the relevant point that the competitive business environment often pushes companies to compromise on ethics, it is worth noting that ethics should not be seen as a hindrance to profitability. To illustrate this, and then I would actually expand on my point as to why I believe the other student's answer is not correct, and over here I say, I would argue that businesses can implement ethical marketing strategies and still thrive financially. By aligning their values with the values of their target audience, companies can build a strong and loyal customer base. Moreover, ethical practices can lead to cost savings in areas such as resource management and legal compliance, ultimately contributing to a more sustainable bottom line. In summary, achieving a balance between ethics and profit is a challenging endeavor, but it is a worthy pursuit that can lead to long-term business success. That's my answer. Remember, this answer is a bit longer, right? But this is a 200 word answer. And if your typing speed is good, if you can really type fast and you, you can see me, I've already done this on screen for you once in the one hour TOEFL crash course that I built. You'll be able to see that this is something that is very, very well possible, this kind of a link. Now remember, you don't need to write different paragraphs. You can basically club this all up into one single paragraph. It's still okay. But at the end of the day, this template is going to make sure that you write somewhere around 150 to 200 words in most cases which is really what the DOEFL is looking for. They say above 100, but I can tell you they're looking for 150 to 200 based on my experience with the DOEFL for years and years now. Now remember, when I took my DOEFL itself, I also had a writing score of 30 out of 30, but that was based on the previous format. And then we started using this format, started teaching students this exact format, and now the students are able to secure 30 out of 30. And I plan on taking it again as well. I'll be updating you on that. But before that, before we go away, now it's time to discuss tips and strategies because that's extremely important if you're gonna be tackling this question for the first time. So my first tip for you is to take a stance. A lot of students are afraid of pointing towards, okay, I think apples are better than oranges. You choose whichever fruit you like. You choose which, whichever agenda you like, you choose whatever direction you wanna choose, but choose one. Don't stay political in between two directions in most cases. It's not really the best thing, choose one. Remember, no stance is incorrect, so you're never going to be penalized on it. Do not be afraid to use the templates. I can assure you, even for the previous format of the DOEFL, we had templates. Students had been using those for years and years. The exact same templates, it was never a problem. There's no problem with plagiarism. There's no problem anywhere because this template is only a structure. It's a skeleton. The exact opinion is something that you craft and based on which you can very easily still score 30 out of 30 on this. The next one I have for you is to not use unnecessary jargon. A lot of times students don't really know the meaning of the words, but they try to put them in there just to think that, you know, we're, we're basically showing the person who's verifying our test, who's checking our test, that we know a lot of advanced English words. Well, if one of those words were to be incorrect in those sentences, trust me, you're gonna be in negative marking. So don't do that. Use words that you know, but at the same point in time, improve your vocabulary yourself if you'd like to use advanced vocabulary. Another thing you can learn is advanced punctuation. How to use colons, how to use semicolons, how to use brackets, parentheses, should there be a space after you open the bracket. All of these things, you need to know these so that you can make sure that you are writing in the best possible grammatical way. Another tip I have for you is to practice on a notepad on a computer. Remember, Microsoft Word or you know any other software you might be using, Grammarly, they might already correct your answers. Don't do that. Write it on a notepad while you're testing yourself so that you can get as realistic a picture about your performance as possible. Finally, always try to leave one to two minutes for a review, if not more. If you can even spare just about 60 to 70 seconds, you can at least go over your entire answer. And then what you can do is you can correct your mistakes. Trust me, even in the professional writing field, we hire a lot of writers. I write myself. 
what happens is when you're in a hurry, you tend to make mistakes. So that's what we don't want on your TOEFL academic discussion task or any other writing task on the TOEFL. So guys, that's all I had for you today. I hope this helps. And again, reach out to me on my WhatsApp if you need help. You already have my number in the description. You can subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Instagram. There's a lot we can do once we're together. I think nothing can stop us. So reach out and I'm excited to connect with you. And I hope this video helps you ace the TOEFL academic discussion question.